Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Naturally, I too am delighted that Scotland has had no deaths for four days and only five cases today. Public Health England began publishing combined data from commercial as well as NHS labs at the beginning of this month. Since then, it's become clear that Leicester has had far more COVID cases than they were previously aware of, with almost 900 over the last three weeks. This data is only published on a weekly basis, however, which is of no use for tracing contacts or early identification of an outbreak. The Secretary of State tends to focus on the number of tests, but does he accept it's actually tracing and isolation that stopped the spread of the virus? So how does he expect local public health teams to identify an emerging outbreak if they cannot access accurate data? And how can they manage it if they're not sent individual test results in real time? When will he be able to guarantee test results are sent immediately to GPs and local public health teams so they can trace contacts and isolate patients? The lack of accurate data can also affect government decisions. On the 10th of May, when the Prime Minister eased lockdown across England, almost 40,000 positive cases from the commercial labs were not included in the data of the four nations. Even now, the UK government website claims there have been a total of just over 160,000 COVID cases in England, despite Public Health England reporting there have actually been 240,000. Does the Secretary of State really think it's safe to go ahead with opening pubs and restaurants across England when there have been 50% more cases than previously reported? And if the UK government were aware of this much higher incidence, why have they knowingly been publishing false information on their website? The Secretary of State. Um, uh, Mr Speaker, I think the best way to explain um, the, the response to that um, is to say, uh, firstly, that all of the data that we have on uh, Leicester has been made available to Leicester County Council, and I pay tribute to Ivan Brown, who's the Director of Public Health in uh, Leicester City Council, who's done a, a, a superb job through this, and he has, um, uh, he has a, all of the data that's available to us is available um, to him, and indeed I can commit to the House that we are uh, going to publish uh, all of the data on uh, test results uh, in order to ensure that uh, the wider public, uh, as well as directors of public health, are able to access uh, this data. Uh, Mr Speaker, uh, the Honourable Lady frequently uh, tries to divide the testing system between um, those tests that are done in hospital labs and those that are done in the labs that we, uh, we built over the past few weeks. Um, and I think this is the wrong approach because it's only because we managed to build those labs that we have such a very large testing capacity across the UK and that those, uh, th those lab tests uh, from the Lighthouse Labs are available in, in Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland, as well as in England. And I pay tribute to the work of the Lighthouse Labs who've done so much to deliver what is now a... a uh, uh, an, an extraordinary uh, testing capability which we can bring to bear on specific problems like this one in Leicester.